Greetings and welcome to another Sir Rancelot podcast. Yay! And there was much rejoicing. Well, when I went over the movies that I was anticipating and dreading for 2013, this was one of the movies that I was dreading. And I said that this is the textbook definition of an unnecessary remake. But I saw it anyway, and I have to admit, it was pretty good. One of the better remakes that I've seen in a long time. Now, does it hold a candle to excellent remakes like The Thing or The Fly? No, of course not. But it did honor the legacy of the original Evil Dead trilogy. And I mean, without replicating the movies exactly, without like shamelessly ripping off every single scene, although pretty much every memorable scene from the, the original Evil Dead was in this film, and yet, I didn't feel like they were ripping off old material. Now, some people, of course, will disagree with me and say that this movie was a hard piece of shit, and if that's your opinion, that's your opinion, that's fine. This is certainly not a perfect movie, and it does have its moments where I'm like, what? What? Are, are they seriously doing that? And I'll get to those in a little while. But anyway, like I was saying, it does honor the original trilogy in its tone. It's very horrifying, but also very funny at the same time. Sometimes I think there's some things that aren't supposed to be funny that end up being funny, but to no ill effect. This is definitely not a movie to be taken too seriously or to think too much about, because you will find stupid plot holes. <laughs> and it amuses me, some of the things in this movie that people actually point to and say, oh, that couldn't happen in real life. <laughs> it's a movie about zombies that are unearthed by this evil book of the dead. And you expect any kind of realism? Believability is another story if you can suspend your disbelief. And I will warn you that if you don't like gore, this movie is extremely disgusting to watch. And this is where people are going to call me a hypocrite because I just got done reviewing VHS, which is a nonstop gore fest. And I didn't like that movie. And I even made a point of saying that gore is really not horror. And it's not. So how does this gore fest of a movie succeed in horror where VHS failed? Simply because you really care about the characters, or at least I did. The story, without really giving any spoilers away, is about this girl named Mia and her brother David and a group of friends, and they're all getting together at this cabin, which I think Mia and David used to live in. And they're all there to try to support Mia, who has gone through a really rough time. And there's this interesting backstory where Mia was taking care of their mother, who was going crazy. Not crazy in a supernatural way, like literally going crazy. And Mia was the one who always dealt with it, was always there, while her brother David was never showing up for whatever reason. He doesn't really go into detail as to what happened and he does try to apologize, but Mia's clearly ticked off at him for leaving her to deal with her mother, especially in a condition like this. But all that is backstory. The main reason why they're all at this cabin out in the woods, no pun intended with the Joss Whedon film last year, but the reason they're all out there is Mia apparently has a drug addiction, a serious one, and the last time she overdosed, it nearly killed her. This girl, Olivia, explains that they're all going to try to keep her in this house, which is nostalgic for her. It's not a spoiler alert that the house is haunted, and they don't know that, but this house has some kind of special memory for her, and they're all hoping that by keeping her in that house and not letting her go, she won't overdose again. They're going to try to make her into a cold turkey. This plot device, while not completely logical, I think it is a nice break from the traditional cliché of these horror movies, where a bunch of friends get together and they're like, Oh, hey, it would be a good time to go out in the woods way out deep into this dark, friggin' scary cabin where no one can reach us. Hey, let's all go and do that! <laughs> but anyway, it's about Mia's relationship with David, and that's something that you can identify with, and I think that that's something that really pulls you to this movie and will get you to care about the characters. So when bad things start happening, when suspense starts building, and this movie does manage to get some suspense, and even when the gory stuff starts happening, you actually care. You want them to survive, and you want to see how the story plays out, and when bad things happen to them, you feel sad, or you feel scared. 
And even when they're doing those stupid things, like going down into a dark room where you know this is a bad idea, for the most part, when that happens, and you're saying, no, don't go into that room, you stupid shit, it's actually a good thing. It's not like, oh, God, I can't believe this person acting so stupid. It's like, oh, no, don't go in there. You're going to fucking die. You're going to fucking die. And I don't want you to die. Now, I'm going to wrap up the spoiler-free section, so if you want to see this movie, and after what I've said, you're wondering if there are stupid horror cliches in this movie, of course there are. Of course there are stupid parts, and there's, there's plot holes, and there's one in particular that I'd like to talk about, but for those that haven't seen the movie, I'm going to hold off until I get into the spoilers, but there is one particular plot hole in this movie where you're like, What? And this part of the movie, I'm still turning around in my head whether it was a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm sure a lot of people are going to raise some serious WTF flags over it. I did, even though I was still willing to go along with it, but I don't know if too many people will be willing to go along with it. But there's some really good foreshadowing in this movie, and I think that's missing from a lot of horror movies today, so I was very glad to see that. The other thing that people will be talking about are the special effects. They are pretty gruesome. It is a mixture of CGI, some really good makeup, and some practical effects. So do I recommend this movie? Yes. So go ahead and see it, and then listen to the rest of this review, because from here on in, I will give spoilers away. I'll give a chance for people to stop listening to this review if they don't want to hear the spoilers, and... Okay, here we go. It's assumed at this point that you've either seen the movie or have no plans to see the movie but want to hear what I have to say about it. The strong suit of this movie was the relationship between David and Mia, and that played out even after Mia became a zombie. Now, there's a really strong moment towards the what I thought was the climax of the movie, where David is about to burn Mia alive down in the cellar, because he hears that there's only three ways of killing these monsters, and you can only free the person's soul by killing it. Either by dismemberment, burning or buried alive and he goes to burn her but then he hears her singing the lullaby that their mother used to sing to them and that is not only very creepy it's also very sad you can see that the guy is conflicted and i think that's about as good a justification as you can get for him to go down to that cellar hoping to knock her out and bury her instead of burn her but i am curious as to why he would try to tranquilize her when he tried that before and it didn't work. Maybe there was something mentioned like this thing, like as a stronger dose, or I don't know how it was able to work when previously it didn't. But when he actually does tranquilize her, let's, you know, I, I'll go with that. There could have been a really scary moment in picking her up and carrying her all through the house. Man, imagine the tension of that. Instead, he tranquilizes her, and then you cut almost immediately to burying her alive. It would have been scary as shit, and I think pretty emotionally powerful if he carried her in his arms. But I do like how she confronts him while he's trying to bury her alive. And at first, she's trying to pretend that she's normal again and that she's in pain. And when that doesn't work, she instead tries to attack him on an emotional level. And I thought that this showed a really smart side of the demon when she tried to play on his guilt for leaving her alone to deal with her mother. And she said things like, oh, your mother, you'll be with your mother soon in hell. And I thought that was really powerful. And then he buries her, and then the fire that on the tree goes out, and he decides to uncover her. And everybody in the theater, including me, is going, no, you stupid shit, you're actually going to unbury her now? Like, because the fire went out? The, the tree that was on fire went out, and now you're going to uncover her? You are stupid as shit. Now, I can forgive it on the, on the grounds that he is, it is his sister. And so every time that he's hesitant to do this, I can, I can buy it. But then he actually tries to revive her. And then you're going, oh, no, stupid, stupid, stupid. She's going to wake up and bite your head off. She is going to fucking kill you. But that doesn't happen, and she doesn't come back to life. So he walks away, and then you expect that he's going to turn around and see her zombified body right in his face, and she's going to kill him. And then cut to the end credits. 
That doesn't happen. He sees her standing there, and then they embrace. And you're going, oh, no, 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 no. She's going to bite you. She's going to kill you. But she doesn't. And here's the moment where I said before that I'm not sure if this was a good idea or a bad idea. Because their reunion, once you know that it's real, is very sweet and very genuine. But you're unable to really feel emotion because you think that she is the demon playing with him. Now, in some ways, that's probably what the movie expected you to think, but it's really hard for the audience to feel something when they're expecting this guy to get killed by the girl. And maybe it's good that what you expected didn't actually happen. And that somebody else killed him instead. And you are rooting for the girl once she's normal, but I keep wondering, how exactly did this work? I guess, like, okay, you have to either burn them or shoot them, but you can only get them back the way they were if you bury them alive and then revive them? Admittedly, it is very dramatic, especially now looking back on it. When I was watching the movie, I kept expecting her to turn into the demon again. And I don't know how they would have clarified it, but then again, all bets are off when she sees him dying and she tries to save him. Then you know that she's completely normal. But it opens up a lot of plot holes, so I'm really not sure if that was a good thing or a bad thing. I'm going to settle on, I'm kind of glad that happens. I just wish that they had done something to clarify exactly what was going on and why, if he did bury her alive, why that didn't end the curse, as the other guy said so before. I think the guy's name is Eric... But then again, Eric also said that he doesn't know if any of this stuff is for real because he's only reading it from a book. And as he says, it's not a fucking science book, which is a pretty funny line. Well, I could talk about a lot more with this movie, but I think I should stop here. But I will say that if you saw the movie and you're pissed off about a certain something not happening, that kind of feels obligatory in a movie like this. A movie called Evil Dead, you expect... Tributes to the original, and there are tributes to the original, but if you got through the whole movie and then you saw the ending credits and you didn't stay, you would have said, oh, I waited the whole movie to see if this would happen and it didn't happen. Well, it does happen, but you have to wait until after the credits. It's not scary, but it's funny, and if you are a fan of the Evil Dead movies, you will applaud this.